Hello there! General Techno here with yet another video review. This time taking a look at the Transformers Titanium Series 6 inch Scourge. An update, or rather remake, of the original G1 character. As you can see, his alt mode is very much the same as the original Scourge. He's got, he's essentially the flying soap dish with guns. Here's what he looks like from the top. He's got basically the same as look. And from the bottom, you can see his, his uh, legs there. You can see where a lot of the stuff goes. So, yeah. He look, and he's got Decepticon symbols here and here. Pigs together pretty well. He's pretty solid. The legs here, as you can probably tell, are different than the plastic here. The legs are, in fact, die-cast, as is the main part of the body back here. I'll point that out again later on. Just for a quick quick scale comparison, because the six inches were measured based on their height in robot mode. Here he is next to his recently updated wingmate, Universe Cyclonus. They go pretty well together, I'd say. I mean, size-wise, if I put Cyclonus up next to Scourge, they're about the, roughly the same scale to work well together. I think that Cyclonus probably could have stood to be bigger relative to Scourge in this mode, but in robot mode, they're pretty close. Alright, now I'm going to transform Scourge for viewer benefit. For transforming this sucker, you start by opening up, he's really simple, you start by opening up these flaps right here, and see the shell former, that's pretty much half the transformation right there, unfortunately. You then, well, his arms are there, you unclip the legs, fold up the feet, rotate them, and then fold the head up. Adjust the wings and... Yeah, that's pretty much it for Scourge. Again, he's got a very simple transformation. As far as posability goes, the wings can be adjusted. Legs. One of the weaknesses of the legs is their limited range of motion posability-wise. His legs can either go side to side, or you can rotate them 90 degrees, and then they can bend up and down. And then the legs can bend up and down. Very limited range of motion. He's got knees as well, somewhat limited posability. His arms can move straight up like this, and his elbows up and down. Although on mine, the elbows are really loose, so they don't really hold poses very well. And, of course, there's the head, which can look up and down, but it can't turn side to side. Very unfortunate. Posability-wise, he isn't really that great. He also comes with a display stand, which I don't have down with me right now, but it's essentially just a little stand that has a Decepticon logo and says Scourge on it. As far as looks go, he is pretty much an update to the original Scourge. The mustache, the beard, the giant thing on his head. I don't know how posable he is compared to the original, but I imagine more so, given the nature of G1 Transformers. For a quick scale comparison, here he is next to Universe Galvatron. As you can see, he doesn't really tower over Galvatron per se, but scale-wise, he kind of feels off just because of his giant head. Galvatron's got a tiny head, and Scourge has a giant head. So whereas, if Scourge's head was smaller, they would probably work very well next to each other. But, they work pretty well as is, but they could have worked even better. And for another size comparison, here he is, along with Galvatron, next to the recent Universe Cyclonus figure. As you can see, Cyclonus is the tallest of the three. I'm just going to rearrange them a bit, so you can get a better idea. There's Galvatron, and here is Cyclonus. But yeah, Cyclonus towers over all three of these guys. And they look all right together in a group. I think that uh, the Henke Cyclonus lo might look better with all three of them, but they do look pretty good together. The only real issue here is scale. In terms of the updates, Cyclonus definitely has had the best update of the three. He has a slavishly G1, but it's got full posability and it looks really, really good. Galvatron's... Galvatron's robot mode looks great, he's got a few posability issues, and his alt mode is different, but he's still definitively Galvatron. 
Scourge, however, is an example of updating the figure without it being a very good update, because he was done in the inferior Titanium series, and most of the molds were plagued by issues. For a final note with Scourge, I'm just going to take a look at his die cast. As you can probably tell here, the entire chest here and the legs are made out of die cast, whereas everything else is plastic. To be honest, this is probably one of the better uses of die cast in the line, unfortunately. Everything supports his weight, and the die cast doesn't really get in the way of the figure the way he's designed. As far as titaniums go, he's one of the better looking titaniums in the series, even though he's got very limited posability. In the end, though, I would only really recommend Scourge to you if you're looking to complete the triumvirate of Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge for your displays, or your photo comics, or whatever. Scourge goes well with the three of them, but otherwise, given the spotty nature of titaniums, I wouldn't really be able to justify buying him on his own. This is General Techno, signing off.